Hi, welcome back to biology class. Again, my name is Mr. Kabuski. Good to see you. Uh, today we're going to finish up unit two, uh, which was all about biochemistry. Today we're going to be talking about enzymes. We ended our last set of notes by talking about proteins and said that they have seven very important functions for life. The last one being enzymes. And so today we're going to focus on exactly what enzymes do and how they do what they do. Now, enzymes could be a little bit tricky if you can't picture exactly what's happening since it happens at uh, the cellular level or even smaller than that at the atomic level really. So what I've done is I've created these graphics to help you kind of understand what exactly is happening uh, with those enzymes inside your cells or inside your body or even inside the test tubes like tomorrow when we do our lab. So what I've done then is there are six boxes on your notes and each of those boxes will correspond to this red rectangle, okay, this big screen right here where the blue is, okay, on your paper. So every time you see a number in the bottom right hand that represents a screen that you need to put onto your notes, one for each of your six boxes. So you'll see numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. You'll kind of get it as we go along. Don't mind the two uh, gauges over here on the left, temperature and pH. That'll be for something we talk about a little bit later. And then there's this dotted line above here. Okay, anything obviously that goes above that dotted line is something that you're going to need to write down. Now there's going to be other things written. Like you'll see, I've got an enzyme already out here, this little blue guy. Okay, and you can see he's got his definition actually written on him. So what I would like you to do then is when we get to those numbers is if you see something written like actually on there, you're going to write that onto your paper as well. So I tried to kind of keep the colors lighter so you could write on top of it. So let's get started. Let's talk about enzymes. Enzymes are, again, a type of protein that act as a biological catalyst. Now, what does that mean? You've probably heard the word catalyst like in songs or in different uh, literature and stuff like that. A catalyst in incites a reaction. It starts a reaction. And it happens at the biological level. We're talking about a chemical reaction. And what it actually is able to do is it can lower the amount of energy that we need to start a chemical reaction. So let's say we actually needed this point of energy. You know, we had to climb up this much. We had to keep adding energy in order to start a chemical reaction here. And then we can actually do our chemical reaction. What enzymes can do is they can actually bring that activation energy down, so we only need this much energy in order to start the same chemical reaction. So it lowers the amount of activation energy required to start a chemical reaction. Right, just said that. Okay. Now a catalyst, again, is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction. Now this point right here on our enzyme, this is known as the active site. Now the active site is the area on the enzyme where the substrate is actually going to bind to the enzyme. So whatever the enzyme is going to do work on, whatever it's going to change, will actually fit into that active site. Now you'll notice if I go back real quick, see that number one down here? So everything that you see on this screen should go in your first box. Okay. So I have two substrates here. Okay, These are substrates. Now let's take a look at those and let's think about this critically. Which substrate do you think will actually work with this enzyme? Well, let's try them and find out. Here's our first one. Didn't work. Well, why didn't it work? Okay, obviously it didn't fit. So let's try this other one. Hey, good news. It worked. All right. Enzymes and substrates should fit together like a lock and a key. Think about it. Once I fit the right key into the same shaped lock, and I can actually turn it and open it and make something happen. Okay. Now, when we talk about enzymes, what exactly are we talking about happening? We're talking about a chemical reaction. So here's our substrate. Okay. When it's matched with the enzyme, then it's known as the enzyme-substrate complex. Okay. Oh, crap. Oh, my God. Chemical reaction is about to take place. So what happened to my substrate? Now my substrate's been changed, okay? That's what a chemical reaction is. You start with something and then it completely changes to something different, okay? So these are known as products. They're the result of our chemical reaction. So enzymes plus substrates equals products. So an enzyme plus a substrate. Now together, those are actually have a special name. Those are known as reactants. They're the materials that go into a chemical reaction and then something comes out and that's known as the products. So reactants at the beginning, products at the end. Okay, enzymes are named after the substrates that they build or break apart. For example, okay, lactose is a disaccharide, meaning it's a double sugar. It's actually made of two different types of monosaccharides. When I combine it with this enzyme called lactase, Lactase will then break lactose down into its two parts, galactose and glucose. 
So the ACE, as you'll notice, is the name of the enzyme. So enzymes always end in an ACE. Okay? They always end in an ACE. So like lactase breaks down lactose. Protease then would break down protein. Or lipase would break down a lipid. So it doesn't have to always be the OSE to ACE. It could be any of those endings that get changed. Okay. And there goes glucose and galactose. Those are our new products. Okay. Now, remember I mentioned those temperatures and pH is on the side there earlier. Temperature and pH changes have the ability to completely change the shape of the active site. Now think about this critically for a second. If I change this shape right here, the active site, will I still be able to do my chemical reaction? Well, let's find out, okay? Now you'll notice temperature is flashing. My temperature is about to change. So the temperature is going down. It's down to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, what happened to my, uh, my active site? it changed shape. So now will I be able to do my chemical reaction? Nope, not going to happen. Okay, So the enzyme can only work at specific pHs and temperatures, which is going to be the basis of our lab tomorrow. So if I bring the temperature back up, the active site now works again, they fit back together, and the reaction can take place. Same thing with pH. Okay. If I change the pH, you'll notice my pH has gone up to 11 now, now that has changed my active site. So now I can no longer bond with that substrate. Okay, That enzyme only works at a pH between somewhere around 7 and 8. So if I take that pH back down, if I throw some acid, uh, some acid back into it or throw some water into it to try to bring that pH back to a balanced level, now all of a sudden we can do our chemical reaction. Okay, oh, sorry. Give you a chance to write that down. So substrates can no longer bind, therefore no reaction takes place. Okay. So this is kind of a review of everything that we just talked about. I know it seems pretty simple when you break it down like this. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you got something out of the animations. If you have questions, please, please, please first go back through and watch it again. Or email me at jkabuski at gocathedral.com or visit the website mrkabuski at dot wordpress.com. Sorry about that. Have a great day. Good luck with the Unit 2 test.